between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business, like the founders of P90X, Atari, Baby Einstein. Uh, you know, For example, Julie Clark, founder of Baby Einstein, grew her business to $20 million in five years, but we also talked about beating cancer, how she beat cancer twice. Um, our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran, and it's application only. Today, I'm very excited um, to have PJ, who seems so calm, so collected, and you're going to you know, understand why that is strange to me in a second. But PJ Jonas is founder of Goat Milk Stuff, which she built in her kitchen into a multi-million dollar business. Her goat milk products business has been featured on the Today Show, The Doctors, and Oprah Magazine. And the reason I am flabbergasted that she seems so calm, she not only does that, but she runs a farm and is mother of eight children. PJ, thanks for joining me. Yeah. What do you use to run the business software wise or platform wise? Like what shopping cart or platform do you use for for your site? We use Xcart. So it is X-Cart. a Yep, it is highly we have one of the most highly customized Xcart systems out there that Why I've X-Cart? ever seen. Um at the time it was what was the most robust shopping cart that you could start rather inexpensively and keep adding on all the additions as your website grew. Um, and then, like I said, we've, we've got it very highly customized. Most people would never think that that's what it is because it's, we've changed it so much. Um, but it's just, you know, I, I can do pretty much anything I want with, with some programming, um, which I don't do. I, I pay somebody to do it, but that was we, just early on. You do the programming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My, my little custom, my little PayPal buttons. And I was really proud of that website, but this one is, is much nicer and works much better. So it's, it was highly customizable, be able to grow with us. Um, and so that's what we use for that. I have a WordPress blog on there, which I've been, um, so overwhelmed with work that I haven't been posting anything on, but I'm going to get back to that. Hopefully, hopefully soon. <laughs> so X cart WordPress, anything else to manage, you know, no, I, I, uh, inventory or anything. Yeah. Else? So we actually just use Excel for inventory. Um, we just use cash registers. We don't use any, we've looked into getting like, um, you know, some of the the different systems they have for point of sale and the farm store and stuff, um, which would which would gather some more data for us. But we um, we gather it on the supply side, on the making of it side, the manufacturing side, as opposed to the the sale side, you know, how much we're restocking in there as opposed to what's selling. Because I just can't I just can't justify, you know, 80 to 100 dollars a month just to be able to gather that when I can when I can do it on a on a spreadsheet. Um, I gave up. um QuickBooks several years ago because I hated QuickBooks with a passion, and what ended it's up a love hate thing. Yeah. Oh, hate QuickBooks. Well, and I was using it, um, but what happens, and most people don't realize this, is there's only a limited number of customers in QuickBooks, and when you max out the customers, which is what we did, then you have to go to their uh, professional version, which at that time, about four years ago, was ten thousand dollars, and I was like forget it. I know I have all my customer information in my, you know, in X cart. I don't need to have it duplicated there. So I just use Quicken now. Quicken has a home and business um, version and that's, it gets all everything my accountant needs and a whole lot easier and simpler. So PJ, how did you end up on a farm? <laughs> um, totally. Uh, that was a God thing. I grew up, I actually grew up on an island off the coast of New Jersey. Really? I mean, yep, I did. Long Beach Island. Um, and we, uh, had an ocean for a house. We were one of the few year round families. So my husband, my husband, my brother and I had, um, the lifeguards would pull their, their boats up over the winter and we would each have one and we would like move and have our, all our stuff down in there and, um, keep, have our own like little playhouses down on the beach under the upturned, uh, rowboats and stuff. And, um, and went to school at the university of Virginia. When you were growing up there, what did you want to be when you grew up? 
I don't ever remember having any. I was too busy having fun. I really don't remember ever wanting to be anything. Um, just enjoying. Yeah. My mom's. I mean, I just, I'm curious at that age, did you know I want to have a big family? I mean, yeah. What were you thinking? Then. Yeah, or maybe I you weren't to have a big family. Um, I, my, in fact, my uh, best friend from high school told me that she remembers us sitting in biology class and me telling her I wanted eight children. Really? I, yeah, I don't remember that conversation, but but she swears by that. And um, something you can't make up. It's yeah, like, right. <laughs> yeah. So I did. I knew I wanted a big family. We just took them one at a time, and um, you know, it was just something that I've just always enjoyed doing stuff and keeping busy. You know, I had my first paper out when I was 10, my first job, I had a checkbook when I was 10 and would pay all my own bills and, you know, very self-sufficient, very independent, went to school at the university of Virginia for engineering and met my husband there. And then we, uh, I worked for three years and had my first daughter and was like, that's it. I do not want to work anymore. I want to be a stay at home mom. And so it was just a matter of how, you know, we were really in debt. We had a lot of school debt. We yeah. moved to Jersey to be closer to family, which is a really expensive um, place to live. And so I started tutoring and uh, working very purposefully on paying off the debt. We paid off, um, it was about $75,000 in College three was expensive. Off. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and then, and so I had a couple kids at that point and I, like I said, I was just really wanted healthy food for them. And, uh, you know, tried to talk my husband into getting chickens. My husband says that chickens are the gateway animal. And so once I, I, yeah, once I convinced him to get chickens, the, the goats were pretty close behind. We had moved to Indiana by that point. So Uh, yeah, what brought you to Indiana? The homeschooling laws. So yeah, we knew we were leaving New Jersey because we really just got priced out. It was just, it was not the kind of uh, environment that we wanted to raise our family in. We were living in Trenton, uh, which is inner city Trenton. My husband was teaching at a charter school in inner city Trenton. A little postage stamp lot, you know, the kids, it was, it was unsafe. So the kids weren't allowed to It's a rough, rough area. Yep. Yep. Um, We were doing a lot of ministry with his students and stuff. And uh, we were like, okay, we, we really just don't want to do this anymore. And so we started looking for, you know, where we wanted to live, what was important to us. You know, my husband grew up in the mountains. He didn't want it to be completely flat. You know, I wanted to be by the ocean. I didn't get, I didn't get that part of my wish. But as we talked about all of the stuff that was really important to us, what became really obvious was everything was around the homeschooling. You know, that was, we, that we're was hard workers. That was a core value that you wanted. Anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, we could get a job anywhere. We we weren't worried about making a living. Um, but there are some homeschooling is legal on the federal level, but it's regulated on the state level. And there are some states that make it really miserable to homeschool. Um, which Pennsylvania was one of them. We make a lot of family wanted us to move to Pennsylvania. I was like, there's no way yeah. I'm going to Pennsylvania. And so Indiana had really friendly homeschool laws and um, and really good business laws too. Which you know we always kind of thought maybe someday we'd we'd do something on the side. And had no idea it was ever going to become this. That was that was never in our in our dreams. And so that's how we we got out here. Yeah, but you still could have not lived on a farm. You just wanted the healthy food. Well, I wanted the children to be kept busy. I'm a big believer that uh, too much free time is <laughs> gets children into trouble. Yeah. And so I really wanted them to have, to have the outside chores and, and the understanding of life and death. I mean, yes, you can have a dog or a cat, but bottom line, you know, you have to take it out. You have to feed it. But if you don't take care of a dairy goat that needs to, to be milked and you forget to shut the fence and gate or whatnot, you know, th- that's life and death kind of stuff. Yeah. And so yeah. that was a, a big part of it. Um, you know, and we just... And you know, we had three acres. It was it was nice because there was plenty of room for the kids to roam, but it, it wasn't a huge farm by any means. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you decide on growth? Like I remember we mentioned the military, like, no, I don't want I don't want that headache. You know, how do you what's the balance between a certain amount of growth and too much growth for you? It's really hard, to be perfectly honest. Um, so when we decided that we were going to um, add the the food products, the goat cheese, the milk, all of that. Sure. That was a lot of a lot of prayer, a lot of family meetings went into that because that we knew was going to be a huge change. Because yeah. in order to get certified and go through all that regulation, you can't do it small. You you know if you want to bake bread and sell bread, most states have a, a home exemption law for foods that are not very risky. But yeah. you can't do that with cheese. Cheese, <laughs> yeah. You have to go all. It's, you know, it's go big or go home. Um, I, I, I've said to people 
in hindsight, I'm not sure I would have done it had I known just how bad it was going to be. You know, we are in that, you know, I, I thought when I was adding the foods that it was going to be adding a new product line to goat milk stuff. And it hasn't been. It's been starting a new business completely really? from scratch. And so when you start a business, you know, you've got all of those years at the beginning where you have to put the infrastructure into place. You have to have everything ready, but you're not selling as much as you can produce. Yeah, and yeah. so it's it's steadily growing, and that's what we wanted because, you know, I learned early on that rapid growth is really hard. Um, I'd much rather have it slow and steady, and that's why we've got all the billboards on the highway, so people coming off the highway to, you know, to come and shop and, and do that. We just started making gelato, which is like a ice cream, yeah. and, so, and serving that. So that's been a big change for people because that, you know, helps um, prompt a lot of the repeat and the, and the locals who nice, would, really. you know, not necessarily run out of their soap that they bought just yet, but they can come in, you know, for, for the gelato. And so, um, you know, growth always sounds really, really good, but when you have trouble hiring people, and, um, you know, you're already working as, yeah. as hard yeah. as you want. Growth isn't always, um, uh, oh, isn't always a good thing because you can really push yourself too far. Yeah. Um, it's one yeah. thing when you can, can easily find people and, um, you know, if you don't need very skilled labor, but you know, it's not just anybody that can come in and make cheese. That's, that's a pretty specialized position and someone that has to be really trustworthy. So it is, a, it is a balancing, it is a balancing act. Yeah. It is a, um, you know, okay, let's let's take this slowly. Let's you know, let's just add one kind of cheese this year. You know, next year we'll add another. Um, we've been working on. So this year we had our our um, well, last year we did the soft cheese, which is called a chev, and so this year we added feta, and then next year we'll be adding the pressed cheese. So you know, there's a lot of people with first year. Oh, do you have pressed cheese? And I'm like, N we will, but not yet. You know, I don't wanna I don't wanna overwhelm us. We're this is the cheese we're developing. This is the cheese we're perfecting. We'll get there, and so. You know, I could have sold it had I added it right away, but I'm not sure that um, it would have helped the long-term goal of the business. What is the process of the one you started with as far as making the cheese? Well, the chef, the, that's what I had made for our family for years. Okay. I, you know, I, I, I could make that. My kids, my, my five-year-old knows how to make it. <laughs> you know? Really? They don't, uh, they don't now because we sell it and you have to do a whole lot more paperwork because of the state regs, but it's, it's something that we had perfected. Yeah. We knew what to do. We knew all the ins and outs. We knew the pitfalls. We knew how to make it taste good and everything. So it was a really easy one for us to start with. Yeah. PJ, this is remarkable. I really appreciate you sharing your story. Um, I always ask this inspired insider, what's been the lowest moment and then what's and how you push through and what's been one of the proudest moments? I would definitely say the lowest moment was um, when I realized that uh, the people I had hired was not were not going to work out because hmm. um, we knew them. They were friends of ours and, and whatnot. And that was really painful. And not not because they're bad people, not because we're bad people, just because it's not a good fit. You know, I tell that people all the time, it, it, you know, you can have a great person with a highly skilled, you know, everything, and it's just not a good fit in your company. But if someone leaves their job, you know, and comes on with you, then you have that response. Yeah, I do. I it's feel a big that responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. yeah. So that was definitely the lowest and, and having, you know, the, the first time you have to fire somebody, yeah. that's, that's really and hard. And they're a friend. Yeah, yeah, that that's really difficult. Um, definitely the low point. Um, the high point was definitely moving to this property. You know, moving to this property, realizing that that we can grow old here. You know, I can keep expanding this business quite a lot on this property, um, and watching the children really come into their own on this. You know, I mentioned before that um, I've I've given the children when. Um, when the youngest turns 18, which is in eight and a half years now, my husband and I are done with the business. I said, I'll be happy to, you know, give a tour, bag soap, give an interview, but I'm not hiring anybody, firing anybody, paying a bill, making a decision, dealing with contractors, you know, any of that stuff. Um, and so right now, all eight say they want to work goat milk stuff when they're older. You know, there's, some of them are still pretty young, so we'll see if any of that changes. But seeing that with this farm, it's big enough and we can add enough stuff that they can all work and support a family doing it and watching them really step up to those challenges and learn things that 
you know, like for example, my uh, my son had a my eighteen year old had a meeting today with a different payroll company because that's trying to get us to switch payroll. Yeah. And he's like, "Mom, what do you want to do?" I'm like, "I don't care. That's that's up to you. You're going to be the one doing right, the payroll. Right. You decide whether you want to switch or not." What are and the so, options? Well, exactly. And what are the costs? And you know, I said, make sure you ask about hidden costs because they're not always going to tell you everything. So, kind of training him in that and watching them step out of their comfort zones and succeed at it has been just just really awesome. PJ, what else is on the farm? Like you have hey. goats, obviously. What else? Yeah. So we have right now. We just have the dairy goats. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, alpine goats, which are the big milk breed. But we also got we do what's called a baby goat experience, where people can come and spend half an hour in the baby goat pen, which is it's a favorite here. And so because our alpine babies grew so big so quickly, we ended up getting a couple of miniature goats. So we have some miniature um, goats as well mm. that that we use in that. Uh, we have chickens for the eggs and we have rabbits for the manure for the garden um so those are the only animals we've in the past at our other place we've had just about everything turkey sheep cows you name it we pretty much we didn't do llamas llamas was about the one thing i didn't do but um in all of that really found that we really love the goats we're really goat people you know we love their personalities every goat has a name they answer to their names you know i was watching i was hanging out with the goats yesterday and watched one of them undo the the gate chain with her tongue. I was like, you, I was talking to her as she was doing it. I'm like, no, you can't do that. And she just kept working it and got the whole thing undone. I'm like, okay, we got to fix that. Um, but they're, you know, they're really fun. We really enjoy them. Yeah. So that's what we have for animals. We have a huge garden, really big garden. And um, we have multiple buildings on the, on the property. I think it's like seven buildings. So we're really happy for a construction to be done. That was, that was very tiring. So PJ, I have one last question um, before I ask it. Where should we point people towards? Obviously, they can go to goatmilkstuff.com. Where else online yeah. or on your site should they check out? Well, I actually have a free bar of soap for your listeners. If wow. That's, that they would that's like amazing. Yeah. Thank so you. So you mentioned the website is goatmilkstuff.com. Yeah. Yeah. And then they go slash inspired soap. And um, it's just one word. There's no space or hyphen or anything. It's just goatmilkstuff.com slash inspired soap. And it'll give them the directions. Wow. Goatmilkstuff.com slash inspired soap. That's very generous of you. Thank you. And so, you know, the website is where everything is pretty much based off from from there. You get to our YouTube channel and our and our Twitter and Facebook. And so, you know, we're on pretty much most of the social medias. We never do it as well as I would like. We uh, we did a lot with videos for a while there. And then with this latest construction, we kind of had to put that on hold. So we're we're you have a good setup right now right where you are. Yep. So we're hoping to get back to that soon. So last question, PJ, is. What should we leave people with? What have we not talked about that would be interesting? What, what else? One of the things that I, I talk to a lot of people about is there's a lot of um, cynicism out there that the American dream is dead, you know, that you really can't get ahead. And I like to tell people that it's still out there. You know, we, we are living, breathing examples of that, that you can succeed. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of late nights. But if you have a product that you believe in, you you can make it happen. You know, the internet is a wonderful thing because for very, very inexpensively, you don't need to teach yourself how to code now. There's there's all sorts of do-it-yourself you know, websites out there. You can put something up and start taking money and start trying things, seeing what sells, seeing what people um, are interested in. Right. One of the, the main benefits that we had from going to all those craft fairs was actually talking face-to-face with people, watching what they did. What drew their eye? What did they pick up and smell for the soap? You know, What were their reactions? What did they buy? How many did they buy? Why did they buy those? You know, how sensitive they, were they to discounts? All of those things that, you know, there's craft shows everywhere. There's farmer's markets everywhere. You know, you don't have to have a farm type product or whatnot. I mean, you can take your, you know, to a flea market and talk to some customers and, you know, for a $50 investment, see what people, you know, what they like and, and talk to them face to face. And so there's, there's a lot of really easy ways to test things. You don't necessarily have to build a, yeah. a store, you know, and, and invest in that. Um, so it, it is still possible. You yeah. know, everybody can still do it. You know, don't don't be afraid of setbacks. It's not always a smooth ride. You know, a lot of people don't share all their failures and setbacks, but we all have them. But it is still possible. Yeah, test small and and try it out. And dream big. Yeah. Yeah, dream big because a lot of people are afraid to do that, and and you can dream big. 
PJ, I want to be the first one. Thank you so much for your time amongst the business, the farm, the kids. Um, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank right. you so much for having me. Thanks. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sea.